Good morning. Welcome to the first Sunday in the month of April. So let's lift our hands. Let's worship the God that kept us, that shielded us, that brought us this far. Everybody open your mouth. Bring your own song from home. Tell him thank you. Tell him, Lord, I am grateful. Tell him, Lord, I love you. He is the one, he's the reason why you are here. You didn't come to hear us sing. He's the reason why you left your home dressed up and came to this place to worship him. So do just that right now. Do just that right now. You and him know the things that he has done for you. Open your mouth and tell him thank you. Open your mouth and tell him thank you. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, it is your name we have come to hallow. Adonai. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, it's your name we've come to hallow. Yeah. Singing one more time from the rising of the sun. Ariana na 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 bo se ya to the setting of Ayabako shatarana bless the Lord oh my soul your name Ayabako te di na na sha Adora Ate Makosha let the circumstances in your life hear it from the rising of Nothing takes my joy. Your name is to Your name is Sumi We lift our hands to honor you. Say, Ah, 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 Sing Adonai, Adonai. Who shall be Elohim Adonai Shatotea
Father. Do the setting of the same. Somebody make some noise to the Lord this morning. Somebody praise the King of Kings this morning. <laughs> Hope you came to church with your dancing shoes. <laughs> Hope you came with the church with your dancing shoes. <laughs> glory to God. Glory to God. Let's do this. Let's do this. Hallelujah. Listen, my praise will never be enough. My worship is more than just a song. You love me more than I deserve, more than I deserve. Oh. I'll praise you till the end of days. I'll raise you. Sing and shout your name. You love me more than I deserve. More than I deserve. My praise will never be enough. Say. My praise will never be enough. My worship is more than just a song. You love me, you say. Love They wonder why you love me so. Tell me why, why you never let me go. You love me, say. Oh, my. 
Papa, don't do me something, no. Come on. Yeah. It is a marvelous thing, no. Has it been good to you? Ha. Gee, Papa, don't do me something, no. have grateful people in the house this morning I I don't believe you I'm not convinced do you have do we have grateful people in the house this morning people who have a reason to thank God people who have a reason to give a shout of praise to your maker to your keeper to your creator to the one who has preserved you who has kept you who has uplifted you hallelujah God is good 
And all the time. Do you really believe this? Are you sure? Has God been good to you? Has God been good to your family? Has God been good to your career? Has God been good in your business? Has God been good to your health? Has God been good to your finances? Can you give God another shout of praise this morning? Hallelujah. Thanksgiving services always um, represent a time, just a, I mean, Thanksgiving should be an everyday thing, but no way you have a Thanksgiving service is dedicating that one service just to say, God, thank you. And we are starting a new series today also. So we're going to read this scripture and we're just going to thank God ahead of what we're going to learn this month and ahead of what God is going to do in our lives. Um, Projector, help me with Deuteronomy 28. I'm reading verse 11 and verse 12, and then I'll go back to verse 2. Okay. Now, feel free to say amen where it concerns you. And the Lord shall make you have a surplus, have a surplus of prosperity amen. through the fruit of your body, amen. of your livestock, amen. and of your ground. In the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. Amen. So understand that livestock re represented Israel's means of livelihood. So when this scripture, here, when it says um, the fruit of your livestock, it means that you will be productive at work and you will bear fruit. Amen. Next verse. And the Lord shall open to you his good treasury. Amen. The heavens to give the rain of your land in its season Amen. and to bless all the work of your hands Amen. and you shall lend to many nations Amen. and you shall not borrow Amen. and you shall lend to many nations Amen. and you shall not borrow Amen. and you shall lend to many nations Amen. and you shall not borrow Amen. see the prayer is sweet Abby very sweet let's go to verse 2 so before, before the, the, the prayer or before the blessing started coming, this is what it said. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you heed the voice of the Lord your God. So it's sweet to shout amen. But that amen is based on your obedience. It's based on you heeding the word of God. And today we're starting a new series on financial prosperity. It's okay when the prayer, when, when the blessings are being released and we're all shouting amen and waving holy hands and being all emotional and crying and being in the spirit. But you see, everything you hear, which in, I will equate to the, the voice of the Lord, the instructions from God, is now left to us to activate and you activate by listening and implementing are you with me you activate by listening and implementing so while we're thanking god we're also going to take a minute now we're going to thank god that as the, we're going to thank god in advance hmm? but we're thanking god that as the as his instructions come the instructions that will usher in the blessing the instructions that will usher in the blessing of my field the blessing of my body the blessing of my finances that I will catch a word. I will catch something this month that, will, that, that I will act on and that will yield that fruit, that will yield that financial blessing. Are we ready to pray this morning? Father, we say thank you. Thank you because your word is coming and we will hear, we will listen. The, the word will be a seed that will, be a, that, 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 will, that will bear fruit in my heart. I, I will just be a hearer. I will be a doer of your word this month. I will be a doer of your word this month. The instructions that will come from you will change my life because I will act on it. And I thank you for the grace. I thank you for the wisdom ahead. I thank you for the strength ahead to be able to do what needs to be done. 
all the blessings that you have declared upon me, all the blessings of wealth, you have said I will lend to nations and I will not borrow. Every instruction that comes from this altar and from every, um, every source that you send my way, Father, I will use it. I will use those information and I will activate the blessing of my life in the mighty name of Jesus. This month will not be like any other month. I, this month will not be like any other month in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you. As a church, we say thank you. We thank you because indeed prosperity is coming home. Indeed prosperity is coming home. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we give God a shout of praise this morning? Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor welcome to church. Is your neighbor happy and smiling? Turn to like two other people and tell them welcome to church. Take your seat as we welcome to your right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me pick a partner. Let me pick a partner quickly. Preach to that person for me. Say, my God. Uh, say it with confidence. Say, my God can do, will do for you exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever ask or think. We serve a God of wonders. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Somebody shout. Hey. You are worthy. We have come to glorify the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, for the great and mighty things that he does and for who he is. Hallelujah. Hey. We have heard with our ears, seen with our eyes, the glory of your name. The heights of your love and the depths of your grace, no one compares. Choir saying, we have heard, seen with our eyes, the glory of your name. The heights of your love and the depths of your grace. No one see there is nothing, nothing you cannot do. No one, no one you cannot say. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, or a money share fire to you. Oni share a la la rumi o ban la o. If you know the song, sing along. Oni share a la la rumi o ban la o. Belo she o di she ya. Oni share a la la rumi o ban la o. Say, Talo That's my God. Talo Here we go now. Say, Obo ni sheyano, Olu banila, Olu oni sa, Olu funila yo. Oba obaro, Abo baro magete. Oh, Lord, who are you? Oh, Lord, who are Hey! Oh, 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 oh,
We know you to be a wonder walking God always. Do. We know you as a faithful God, you continuously do wonders. him in your own words this morning can you tell him how good he is open your mouth open your own mouth and 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 worship him you think about his goodness and say lord i thank you you are the ancient of days because you are unmovable i am also unmovable hallelujah thank you father thank you because i stand strong because you are the ancient of days Oh Lord, we give you praise. You are, you are a good daddy. You are a good God. You are always looking out for us. Always watching out for us. Always providing for us. Always helping. Always protecting. Thank you, Father. For always showing yourself strong in our lives. For always showing yourself faithful. We call you faithful. We judge you faithful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We are always moving forward. We are always making progress. Our lights are shining brighter because of you. Thank you for victory. Thank you for victory. Lord, we give you praise. Oh, Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we are grateful. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Is somebody happy this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you glad to be in God's house this morning? Are you really glad? Amen. It's a blessing. And God has packaged this month specially for you. Tell someone specially for you. 
Isaiah 55 verse 11 says, it is the same with my word. I'm reading NLT. I send it out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I... No, don't, don't, don't sit down. Thank you. It will accomplish all I want it to do. And it will prosper everywhere I send it. He says, so is my word that goes out from my mouth, NIV. It will not return to me empty. This word for this, this the, the theme for this month, the word that we hear, cannot return to God empty. Hey, Amen. In case your career has been stagnant before, this is the month of takeoff for you. In case your business has been stagnant before, this is the month of takeoff for you. By reason of the word. Somebody say, by reason of the word. I will hear my word and I will do my word. Because there's a word for you. You say, you shall hear a voice behind you telling you, this is the way work in it. Hallelujah. Can we just spend a few minutes to just, 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 just pray in the Holy Ghost? That our hearts will be ready to receive God's word. Our hearts will be ready to receive God's word. That God's word will come with power. Our hearts will be ready to receive. Thank you, Lord, for the first quarter of the year. Enter the second quarter. We enter the second phase, the second level of your blessings in our life this year in the name of Jesus. O Mandrahi Satakai. Lebrata Bosoto Koborodo Soto Koborodos Jagadaza Dagadaya. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you worship, mighty God. We give you worship, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Come on, give the Lord a big shout, somebody. Give him a praise this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Please take your seat this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Welcome to April. Welcome to April. I'm excited. I'm excited. God is a good God. So, we are starting uh, a powerful series this month titled, Show Me the Money. Hallelujah. Show me the money. Praise God. Um, the truth is that um, I'm not going to waste my time trying to tell everybody or anybody how important it is to prosper, all right? It is God's will, and aside it being God's will, we too, we have will, we know that money is necessary for living on this earth, all right? It's God's will, it's our will, it's the human will. We, we too want to prosper. There's no, there is no uh, benefit to poverty. There is no benefit to poverty, so I'm not going to waste time trying to convince anybody that prosperity is good. Anybody that thinks prosperity is not good, thank you very much. God bless you. Give us part of your money. We have something to do with it. All right? We're not going to waste time with you. And I need to let people know, I, I, I personally have come to hate poverty over the years. I've come to hate it. And I want to see if I can also get you to hate it. You need to hate poverty. Not just for yourself, but even for your environment. I hate when a system or a structure is trying to keep people poor. Um, it's kind of the predicament um, many of, of, of people in Nigeria are finding themselves in. We have systems and structures that are trying to keep people poor. So I need you to be angry against poverty and against anything or any structure, any system that wants to keep people poor. Poverty is bad. Poverty is bad. Poverty is of the devil. I need to understand this. When poverty prevails, conscience goes to sit down quietly in a corner. <laughs> what do I mean? When there's serious poverty in the land, nobody talks about human conscience or human behavior. You know, people lose their humanity. That's what I'm trying to say. 
people lose their humanity when they're serious poverty. So I need you to hate poverty. It's not something we tolerate. It's not something we manage. It's not something we put up with. It's not something you say, if it be God's will, let's wait for God's time. Mm -mm. You need to hate poverty with a passion. Because when poverty prevails in a society, conscience is thrown out the window. He goes to sit down and in a, on a stool and sit down quietly and let people do whatever they need to do to survive. That's what I'm saying. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I will give you an example. In Bible days, in Bible days, there was a time there was so much poverty in the land, people were eating their own children. Are you getting what I'm saying? So if you're here and you're tolerating poverty, you don't know what I'm talking about. There was a time in Bible days, there was so much poverty, people were eating their own children. So people would gather and say, today we will eat your child, and then tomorrow we will eat my child. You see, when there's poverty, parents eat their children. Doesn't it look like what's going on today in Nigeria? Yes, maybe we've not started eating the flesh like they did in Bible days, but we are eating the destinies. People are eating destinies of their children. Every uh, passing leadership and government of the country kind of steals the future of the younger generation. Because when I was young, I hear that, oh, if you just went to school those days, that uh, the average graduate could afford a car. The average graduate could afford a house. In fact, the house I grew up in, in Festac, my parents won that house. You know, they, they all con contested and competed. Something like a lottery, you pay a small deposit, and then some people will be awarded the house. That's how my dad won the house. People were with a full duplex, three-bedroom duplex with a garage. I mean, this is similar to what happens abroad today. People, people won those houses and had a pay, repayment plan. You know, those days I heard that if you wanted to travel to the UK and all that, you didn't even need a visa. I mean, you just get a passport and go to the airport and tickets were very affordable. In fact, nobody wanted to live abroad then. But you see that with each person government, the future of the next generation have been eaten. You need to hate poverty and you need to hate the systems and structures that are keeping people poor. You need to hate it. If you know anybody benefiting from it, you need to warn them. You need to talk to them. I wanted to say you should curse them, but I don't know if you should do that. But they, they are deserving of a curse for sure. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Poverty is bad. It steals. Those people were eating their children. As in the, and I've sat down to think about it. Were they boiling those kids? I mean, how do you eat your child? Those of you that have children, just picture your last born. You just put him in pot and boil. Is it curry or what do you use to boil this boy or this girl? This is what they did in Bible days. They will show you the scripture in case for those that have never seen it before. And, and the argument was that we ate my own child. Now, and the agreement was that tomorrow we eat your own child. Now you have gone to hide. <laughs> you have gone to hide your own child. That was the argument people were having because there was hunger in the land. When there's hunger, when there's poverty, people lose their conscience. They lose their humanity. Listen, with the kind of poverty we are pushing in Nigeria today, the hookup culture will grow. This means the average girl on the street, most, most, most will be into prostitution. Most will be into prostitution. Whether part-time, full-time, side-time, short time, but there will be some prostitution going on because, because ladies generally cannot contest or fight ruggedly as men. What do I mean? If a man is so hungry, he can go and carry cement. He can go and carry blocks. He can go and rob. He can rob to his back. But he can do <laughs> a lot of negative. But you see, women generally are not as physically strong. So they say, why am I going to hustle when I came with a product that I can sell? So hookup culture has grown over the years. In fact, when I was young, there was no such word as hookup. The word did not exist. You were either a proper prostitute or you were just living in your parents' house, a normal girl. But today, a lot of girls that look normal are in hookup culture. That means they're just prostitutes, but they're not in a brothel. That's the difference. And strangers can beat for them. I heard of, 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 of somebody that had a WhatsApp group that had over 500 men and that, and that girls pay her to post their picture and guys will bid and they will go and visit these guys and, you know, sleep with them and collect money. 
not to talk of the many that have been slaughtered, the many girls that have gone for hookup culture and been killed in hotels or, 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 or dehumanized and amputated and they cut off all their private parts and things like that. The stories are everywhere because the, as long as poverty thrives, conscience will be buried. I need you to hate poverty today and the systems that put, ensure poverty. Poverty has been weaponized in Nigeria. That's why the average person in Nigeria is mindless, cannot think. Or they cannot think well. Oh, not to talk about Yahoo. <laughs> when we were young, there were few people that were in fraud. Everybody knew them as the fraudster. Now you can't even point to is Yahoo because a lot of the young boys you are seeing driving cars and doing stuff are in Yahoo. In fact, if you even speak against Yahoo now online, you will see how many people that will fight you. In fact, we are, as a country, we are even debating whether Yahoo is bad or not. This is how mad we have gotten. There is a debate. People debate it. Is stealing bad or not? And I pray for all those that support Yahoo. One day, they will steal your mother's pension. One day, they will steal your father's retirement money. One day, they will steal your own school fees. Since you say fraud is good, you'll be a beneficiary of that, uh, of, of that lifestyle. Then you'll be able to know if it's good or not. For whatever excuse you are using to perpetuate it, at the base of it is poverty. In countries where people have jobs and things like that, you know that the rate of those kind of things are less. It's not a cultural issue. Yes, I know, I know that there are bad people in every country. But the level, when poverty hits, or should we talk about kidnapping? Should we talk about banditry? What should we talk about? These are things that was never heard of in old gen older generations, but each generation eats their children. I pray that a time doesn't come in this country where everybody will be carrying a gun and shooting everybody and you will, somebody will rob somebody, then somebody will rob the person that robbed the person, then somebody will go and rob the other armed robbers. I pray we don't get to that point. But that's what poverty can do. So if you, if you are here and you tolerate poverty, you need to know what you're tolerating. That's what poverty can do. I need you to hate poverty today. I need you to hate it with all your heart. Me, I hate it with all my heart. So let's get into show me the money. Let's get into it a bit. Hmm. What is God's plan for us to prosper? Look, God's principles for prosperity are pretty simple and straightforward. And I pray, I pray, I pray for you that you will, you will apply it. I don't know or care who you are. You can be financially blessed. In fact, you are, if you're a Christian, already financially blessed. It doesn't matter what country you live in. It doesn't matter what job you do. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter your educational qualification. You are the blessed of the Lord. Prosperity is your portion. Prosperity is your birthright in God. No child of God is meant to be poor. No child of God is meant to be poor. I want to beg you, try to soak into what we're going to teach throughout this month. They are simple and, you know, easy, easy to do. Just put in the effort to do it. Jesus said you always have the poor with you because some people just don't, won't put in the work. Mm. Come on, tell your neighbor, show me the money. No, you didn't tell him confidently. Look at that neighbor, say, show me the money. Hallelujah. Money is important. This service cannot hold without money. These instruments that you used to worship today couldn't hold without money. Even you couldn't get here today without money. You paid transport to fill your car. This hall, this tent couldn't be here without money. This microphone won't be here without money. Money is necessary for life. As long as you are alive on the earth, you need money. God is aware of that. He's not surprised. He's aware. It's for you now to agree with him. There are five levels Everybody will find themselves financially. Five levels. I need you, when I explain the five, I need you to identify where you are in the five. And identify what your next level should be. There are five levels where everyone sh is or should be. or where, where you, where, There are five levels of, of money. Let me say it that way. There are five levels of money. So the first one, if you're writing this, is a good thing to write. The first one. First category are people that are poor. People that are poor. Now, 
the thing about poor is that being poor is not about your pocket. It's more about your mindset. Okay? First category is people that are poor. Of course, you know what it means to be poor. It means you literally don't have nearly enough. As in what you have is not... You don't, we, don't, we can't even quantify what you have in comparison to what you need. You are always in deficit. You have more lack than anything else in your life. You need everything. You need everything. So when people are poor, it's not really about their pocket. Poverty is more a mindset than a bank statement. Poverty is more a mindset than a bank statement. So the first category are poor people. These are people that do not have enough or even nearly having enough to survive on. The feeding is poor, the accommodation is poor, the healthcare is poor. Everything is below basic. They are below basic. You know, basic is not even great. But imagine being below basic. The places they live, below basic. <laughs> when you have lived in these places, guys, water is coming out from both up and down. Is somebody getting one on side? If you have been poor before, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. When you, when you see where poor people live, there's flooding. When it rains, water enters their houses. Water enters from the gutter. There's water from the ground. When it's raining, water is also coming from the top. Then there's water from the wall because there are taps and everything is leaking. Or the water is also soaking to the wall. So they have water from up. The roof is never well done. They have water from down. There's flood. and there's, You must know how to swim when you're really poor. <laughs> if you have really seen poor people, Food is a luxury. Food is a luxury. They don't have plan of when they eat. They just eat when they see food. You know, normal people have, oh, I'm going to eat lunch. I'm going to eat dinner. No, poor people don't think or talk like that. Poor people eat whenever I see food. Whenever I see food. <laughs> That's when they eat. So sometimes poor people can eat two or three times in one night because that's when they are seeing food. They visit one person, there's food, they eat. They eat. When you see poor people, they eat, they eat, they eat because they don't know when the next one is going to come. They eat for the future. <laughs> poor people eat for the future. Really, people that are blessed eat for now. They eat to live. No, poor people live for survival. You eat for the future. You don't know when you're going to see the next meal. The first category of people are poor people. And don't worry if you are here and that's your category. I have good news for you. God is going to shift your level in the name of Jesus. That's why by doing this series, you will not remain on that level. In the name of Jesus. So poor people, but their own is largely a mindset, not really in the pocket. Second one, category of people, are people that are broke. People that are broke, so there is poor. It's a state of mind. First, before it's a state of life. Okay, when you're poor, it's a state of mind first, before it's a state of life. So the root of being poor is first the mind. That's why you cannot give a poor person money and help him. No, he doesn't, you don't help him by giving him money. If you ever try to give money to a poor person, you know what I'm talking about. You do not help him by giving him money. The thing generating the poverty is still running. The, 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 the software generating poverty, so if you like, give him 10 billion. That's why, do you know how much America and other countries give Nigeria in aid and give other poor countries in aid? And since they gave back to me, I've never seen a country that they gave aid and one day said we don't need aid again. I've never seen it. Because the thing generating the poverty has not gone. If you like, keep giving them money. It's like pouring water into a basket. Which day will it get filled? Never. So you don't give a poor person money. That's not what they need. You've not helped them by giving them money. They are going to come back. Because whatever is generating the poverty is still alive and well. They are going to come back. So, first level is poverty. Second one is people that are broke. Now, with the other ones I will mention, all the people in the category can be broke, except the last one, the topmost one. All the people I will mention as we go on can be broke. Broke is a temporary state of not being liquid, okay? So broke doesn't mean you don't have money. 
or you don't have assets. Broke just means you temporarily does not have, you don't have liquidity. You don't have cash. So almost every human being has been broke at one time. In fact, the wise man said, I've been broke many times, but I've never been poor. <laughs> I like that. I've been broke, but I've never been poor. Even me personally, I've been broke. Ah, well, well. Well, well, but I've never been poor because my mindset had never accepted. Oh, and this is one of the best things you can do for your kids to make sure they don't imbibe a poverty mindset. This is why I hate what some people are doing to this country because it's not the lack that is the problem. It's the lack mindset that is worse than the lack. There's something worse than lack. The lack mindset is worse than lack because when you want to even give abundance to the person that has lack mindset, he will take the abundance and reduce it to lack. <laughs> most people that run things in Africa, most leaders in Africa have poverty mindset. No matter how much you give them, they will, they will bring the country down. No matter what you give them. Africa is rich in resources, diamonds, silver, gold, anything, oil, anything you want to call we have. But we're still the poor continent. What a shame. Because everybody, most people running the country are poor in their mind. That's why they steal and steal and steal and keep stealing. <laughs> I'm waiting for the day we'll have leaders that will need to go for treatment abroad. It's poverty mindset. How much is the machine? What, how much can they possibly sell in machines? How much can doctors be? Is it not these are Nigerian doctors that are working in those places? <laughs> how much can they charge that we can't bring them here? But when you are poor, when you are poor, even if they give you 10 billion, you will still behave poorly. Your behavior will come, it will show. Poverty behavior will come out. Even if they give you 10 billion dollars, you will still think poor. <laughs> Every time I see a leader of any... Can you picture a Russian president going for treatment in America? <laughs> These things are not done in any sane country. Or pre picture British Prime Minister. Say, where is he going? He says he's going for treatment in South Africa. He's holding his drip. <laughs> so the things we do in Africa here. How much does the hospital cost? There are individuals that can build that thing. But when, when, when poor people gather, give them 20 billion, they will still say there's no light. It's a mindset, it's a spirit. In fact, the way somebody put it, so it's even a spirit. So the next level is broke. Being broke. So the broke is a temporary state of not having. Poverty is a mindset of not having. Being broke is a temporary state of not having liquidity. So sometimes a rich person can be broke. Maybe he just bought a business, just bought some investment, is building a house, he might not have liquidity, but he's not a poor person. He still drives a car. He still even has staff. He has a driver. He has a chef. But he's broke because of some things he has done. He just bought land, one acre somewhere, ten acres somewhere to invest. So he's not a poor person, but he's broke. Okay? Everybody can be broke. Or anybody can be broke. Let me say that way. Anybody can be broke. Third level are people that are comfortable. These are people that are comfortable. Comfortable or av average. I really don't want to call them middle class because that's not what the meaning of middle class. So I would like to say they are comfortable. How do you know the person that is comfortable? His income and his expenses are very closely related. His income and expenses are doing uh, are, are in a competition. This month, his, his expenses will overtake his income. Next month, his income will overtake his expenses. But all with a small margin. Small margin. So he's comfortable. He has a house. I don't mean he owns a house. He lives in a house, probably rented. He, he drives a car. He's probably paying small, small, or whatever. It's an average car. He, he, he shouldn't go to an okay school. But... If you, if you tell that guy now that, um, and he's well-dressed, he, 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 he can buy some okay clothes. 
is when you call that guy for a meeting and say, um, you know, we want to buy some things here. We need four people that can give or ten people that can give one, one million each. <laughs> Before you finish that sentence, that comfortable person, he, has, he, he, he will sink inside his chair and vanish from under. He has no loose cash. Barely always surviving. Usually owing. He's owing on many fronts. He pays his rent a bit late. Pays his car payment a bit late. Always just trying to stay above. So his income and expense are close. He's comfortable. He's not a poor person. He eats, he's going to eat a good lunch today. He has some money once in a while to go, for, to go to lunch, to go to a good restaurant. In fact, some of them are so mastered that they can even save and plan to go on vacations for summer. <laughs> it's, not, it's not common now again because of dollar and ticket price. But those days, many comfortable people, summer like this, ah, the whole Nigeria is empty now. <laughs> now everybody goes to village. Nobody's going abroad again. Even village said they can't go call kidnappers. But those days, <laughs> in this country, ah, summer, everybody has gone. It's just that these people, their life is so tight. If you need them to bring some money now, let's Oh, let's build something. Let's, let's buy something. Oh, the transformer is bad. Can we just, who can donate? Or oh, church is doing something. Any people that can give one million, ten million. Uh, after they are fine dressed. I've passed off for a long time. Oh. I've passed off for a long time. There are people like that. They dress well. You say, okay, we have some strong people here now. Let's raise this thing. <laughs> That's why you know that that guy, eh, that his dressing is his whole investment. That her gilly, uh, her outfit, that's all her money. She has no extra money. Because the income and the expenses are close. You see, that guy that is, the, that is the comfortable guy, he's so concerned about what people think about him. Pastor Mide will address that in our own um, session, in our own um, Sunday that she will preach. That guy is so bothered. These are the words we people say, gang. Because all the children are going to a certain school, my own children must go too. But you are struggling to pay. But what will people say? They want to live in a neighborhood because all my people are living on the island. All my people are living in so-and-so. You want to live there. <laughs> These guys are too concerned with what people think. Too concerned with what people are saying, what people think. They are in competition with who is not in competition with them. <laughs> they are the ones that do wedding they can't afford. Because they are very close to prosperity, but they are not yet prosperous. So they deceive themselves to think they are prosperous enough to be spending like somebody that is prosperous because they're very close to it. May God deliver you in the name of Jesus. Ah, you see, but like I said, Pastor Mideo will talk about all those things. They, are, they have culture. They have culture that is about people. We, we, we have three children. We never did one year bad day. Never. You know, there are things we would do. Uh, baby dedication party. Uh, what do they call this thing now? Push party, uh, gender review party, uh, engagement party. I never engage my wife. No engagement. It's my, I marry her straight. I marry her straight. She, she doesn't have engagement ring. Even though she still talks about it once in a while. But I say, I'm not engaging you. I'm marrying you. Now, if I want to buy her diamond engagement ring, if not, be say if I want to, if I go still buy them now. There are things you can do later when you don't flex. <laughs> Is somebody getting what I'm saying? They are so interested in nonsense. We never did one year party. Why? Why you do one year party? The celebrant is not going to attend though. You sleep throughout or cry throughout. He doesn't even know who and who came. And you invite adults. Some of you even buy alcohol for them. Buy bread. <laughs> we, our children only celebrated their birthday when they were old enough. Maybe like five years. When they were old enough to even tell us who they want to invite. And it's only children we invite. We don't invite adults. What concern you as parents? Drop your child and go and come and pick a picture. If you want to wait, wait in the car. Only children. And children don't even eat much. Like they, they are much children in play. I see people just say, you must celebrate bad day every, every <laughs> comfortable people. Eh? They want to look rich. But they are struggling. They want to look comfortable. They want to look like they got it together. <laughs> comfortable people were, were, were the ones that suffered the most when the economic hardship that, has been, that is currently going on in Nigeria came. Because they were already living at a very tight leash, tight, tight level. So when light, fuel, things like that began to go up, ah, it affected comfortable. Pretending became more difficult. 
pretending became more difficult. Poor people, they poor before. So things got harder. They, they, are, they, are, they are rugged now. It affected them, but not as comfortable people. Woo! <laughs> The next stage of people are the rich. This is where you must start. Everybody must, must get to. I and PM have a, a course and a book and a training we're trying to put together because we believe every Christian family can be rich. It's a mandate we have in our heart to pursue, to help every Christian family be rich because poverty is bad. When you're poor, if your children go into for one, you see, a lot of the boys doing Yahoo, a lot of girls doing uh, prostitution, a.k.a. hookup, a.k.a. runs. Their parents are even aware, but they can't correct them. When you're a poor parent and your child is one paying the light bill, your child is one paying the bringing car, so many of those parents now lose the capacity to correct or to even question where their children got the money from. Poverty is bad, though. I'm telling you. He shuts the mouth of a grown man. You see a grown man with hair on his chest. He can't talk. His daughter is a prostitute. He can't talk. His son is a fraudster criminal. He can't talk because he's poor. He's poor. Oh, thank God for our parents' generation. They didn't get many things. Maybe they didn't get many things right, but things like morals. Those days, you, 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 you steal a pencil. You bring a pencil home that wasn't the one they gave you to school. Your mother or father will beat. They will beat. <laughs> You will, go and read, you will go and explain how you brought that pencil home. But today, girls, young girls are bringing a full car home, bringing a full house home. <laughs> and the parents are saying, praise the Lord. What a joke. So, next level is rich. Who is the rich guy? The rich guy, after his expenses, has some significant amount of money left. He has a lot of change every month after his expenses. He has change. He has loose change. He's liquid. He's liquid. Now, the issue is that if he doesn't move to the next level, which is where everybody really needs to really also get to, if he doesn't move to the next level, being rich, one thing can make you come down. One wrong investment. Many of you know people that were rich and have today they are no more rich. They had big houses, had fine car, had a Range Rover, had a Mercedes, but they did one wrong investment. Somebody duped them. Somebody robbed them. Business went down. They lost their job. The thing about rich people is that one small tragedy, sometimes even illness that they are paying, one small divorce, one small tragedy can cut them down from rich back down to broke. Not even to average, oh. They come really low. So you see them selling their car. <laughs> because the rich are deceived into thinking that they are wealthy. Because rich and wealthy are different. The rich is the one tempted to buy a Range Rover. But what he doesn't realize is that servicing the Range Rover, repairing the Range Rover, can be a problem. <laughs> if you hit rich man Range Rover, that's the person that comes down and carry your cadaver man up like this and show God before you hit him on the ground. <laughs> because he knows how much that side mirror is. He will carry them. But you see, the wealthy man can't even stop. No time. But the rich, he knows the side mirror. <laughs> I don't know how much. One of my, one of my boys um, uh, uh, last month, he, he just bought a Range Rover. When he told me the price, I said, eh, I, I didn't even know they sell cars. Because that's long I bought a car. That's long I bought a car. So I didn't know they sell cars that I'm out now. I think he said he bought it 45 million. I said, eh, one car. <laughs> this is how much they're selling cars now. And I've warned him. I've warned him. I've told him I will follow up that I want you to buy houses. I want to come and dedicate the houses. Don't buy a car. Because when, as we go on this month, we'll get into that. A car is not an asset. So I've warned him that go and buy a house. I want to dedicate it. I'm not impressed with this car. 45 million or something like that. The millions. That's how they buy in car now. 60 million. 70. Car. That one useless Nigerian car that we hit. He doesn't know the value of it. He will just hit you and he will beg you. You will seize his car. Seize the man. The money is still not enough to change the mirror. <laughs> you 
If somebody catches me, so the rich are tempted to think that the flow will continue forever. The rich are usually the ones you notice that they make money for some time. After a while, life hits them because one tragedy, one business investment, one government policy, one government policy, just change policy, no importation of this one or this one, the seizes container. One thing usually brings the rich down because he thought he was going to stay. The rich are the most, are the, is the most shaky place among all the ones we've mentioned. And people enter it and come out quickly. Many people, because entering that rich place, if you have been poor, you have been broke, you have been comfortable, it's a different life from when you are finally rich. When you, reach, when you are rich, it pushes. You, that's when you know that your TV at home wasn't flat enough. <laughs> that you need a flat screen, flatter screen TV. Is your brain flat? What are you looking for? What are, what, what's not showing on your normal TV that we show on the flat one? <laughs> Rich people, they are in danger. They are endangered species. They are the ones that know that they must buy the latest phone. What's wrong with your old phone? I use all my phones till the phone is begging. Doesn't matter the year. Like, bring anything out. <laughs> it's rich people they target rich and poor. I'm rich and uh, I'm comfortable that they target with all these new phones they're releasing every week. Uh, 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max, 15 Pro Max Vex. <laughs> it's rich people. You don't see wealthy people confused about such things. Wealthy people are the ones manufacturing it. If you like releasing latest ones, it's your business. So rich people are in danger. If you are here and you are rich, you must take action quickly so that you don't fall back to either comfortable or even broke or poor. Rich people have too much self-confidence. They feel they've arrived. They, if you're not careful when you're rich, you start trusting money. The Bible says, tell those that are rich that they, have no, they, 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 that they, trust, that they don't trust in riches so that they trust in the living God. They shouldn't trust in uncertain riches. This is the book of Timothy. DJ, put it up. He said, tell those that are rich in this world that they should not trust in uncertain riches. Because when you become rich, you become, you become very self-confident. You think you can't you, you can lose money again. You want to use money to solve every problem. You forgot, you find, forget how God brought you to where he brought you to. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So if you are rich, there are things you must do quickly. Save from the excess of the money coming in. Save. You must save drastically. We'll deal with all these things more as we go on. I'm just mentioning it now. You have to save what? Drastically and ferociously. In fact, when you are first rich, it should not show that you are rich because of how your thinking should have been corrected. Because if you are not careful, the Bible says when riches increase, the thing that we eat, it also grows. What happens to many people that are comfortable or rich is that as their income increases, their expenses increase. The comfortable is the worst in that one. As they add 10,000 to his salary, he also looks for 10,000 expense to add to his lifestyle. So he's still always at that level, same level. As they increase his bonus, he, he goes to a new apartment. <laughs> he says he needs more room. What happened to the other room? You were comfortable in that two room before. Now they've increased your money. He says you need more room. <laughs> you don't need more room. You need more sense. You don't need more room. You need more discipline. Is somebody getting what I'm saying, sir? So the rich and very endangered. What you do, you save ferociously the change. The extra income. Don't change your lifestyle first. You must make up your mind that if God ever makes you or allows you to be rich, you will never go back. That should be this, the, the, the vow, the pledge of any rich person. That once my leg touch rich, what does it mean? Once my leg touch where I, I make more money than, than I need to spend at the moment, I will never go back to being comfortable or poor. How do you do that? You save ferociously and look for the opportunities to invest that change, that liquidness. You must invest it in things that can generate money whether or not you are working. And of course, I can't teach you investment because there are so many opportunities to invest. You need to study. You need to talk to people that know about it. You need to research. Real estate, stocks, shares, bonds, there are so many things. I usually don't like to mention a specific one because people watch it from every country. In some countries, some things do better than the others. And maybe this year, 
I might be preaching now, maybe shares was, was earning good money. Maybe in five years' time, somebody's watching this video, shares no more making good money. So I generally don't like to specify that, this, but you need to look for ways that this money can be working for you. You need to look for ways like that. The last stage are those that are wealthy. Those that are wealthy. I've not even started today's service, so I'm just going to do 10 minutes after this explanation so that I'll just cap up what I wanted to share today. The last phase are those that are wealthy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where you really want to be. And if you're a child of God, you can be here. You have a covenant with God to be here. Abraham, your father, was wealthy. He had, he had, he had a staff strength of over 300. Because see, he took 318 servants to go and fight war. Three servants. Those were not all his servants. And those people were married. They had children. So Abraham was catering for over a thousand people probably. And they were living in his house. <laughs> so imagine how big his house would be. And the Bible said, if you be, if you, if, if, if you be Abraham, if you be in Christ, you are Abraham's seed. Or how do they say it? But basically, we are connected to the covenant of Abraham. You are connected to the covenant of Abraham. So you too should be wealthy. Our heritage is very wealthy. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all wealthy. Somebody getting what I'm saying? All wealthy. When you are wealthy, you have so many sources of income. The difference between wealthy and rich is that most times the rich cannot stop working. The wealthy can stop working and still never need money. Still never go broke. The rich, if he stops working for a few months, ah, his lifestyle will shake because the rich is still very dependent on him working. He still has to go for business or go to work to maintain being rich. But the wealthy is no more working for money. Money is now working for him. He employs money as staff. That's the difference. The wealthy can go on a one-year break and he will still be, he will still be enjoying life because the, he has so many sources of income from usually different industries and different countries and different currencies. So if you block him in one area, he'll just go and eat on the other side. When you are wealthy, it's difficult. It's still possible, but it's difficult for you to become poor. Because at that stage, so many multiple streams of income, different things bringing them money, different relationships and partnerships. They're comfortable. They are really doing well. Sometimes they lose money, they don't notice. Because other channels are bringing money. And I pray for you. You will be wealthy in the name of Jesus. There is such a realm where you are wealthy, where you, don't, you are not thinking about money. As, in, as the clock is going, you are being credited in different parts of the world. I'm telling you, there is such a realm that you are sleeping, but money is still entering. A lot is entering. From different parts of the world, you have investments in different countries. Different countries, real estate, shares. So if we're, if, if, it's difficult for all the countries to be broke at the same time. And even when they are, all the countries are even broke, it's usually because of how much you've made over the years. So when you're wealthy, that's the one that is generational. Where even your children and grandchildren can't finish the money. Except they are mad, of course. They really can't finish it. They can't finish it. They can just reduce the wealth. To, but usually the, 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 the flow is heavy. That they can't finish it. I pray for everyone that's under my voice. You will be among those that will be wealthy in the name of Jesus. And if there have never been a wealthy person in your lineage, I prophesy over you. You will be the first in the name of Jesus. You will see wealth. I say you will see wealth. I say you will see wealth. People that are wealthy can't count their money now. When you are wealthy, you have an accountant that has an accountant that has an accountant. When you still count your money yourself, you are not yet wealthy. You come, you are, maybe you are just comfortable or max rich. When you are really wealthy, you can't keep tabs on all your investments around the world. There's no way you can keep tabs on it. And you are very liberated in your mind. Very liberated in your mind. Hallelujah. Okay. Ten minutes. Let me round up for today. But I hope, I hope this has blessed someone. I hope, I hope this has blessed someone. Third John 2. Now, the key to this month's teaching is a four-letter word. The key to this month's teaching 
is a four-letter word. It's S-O-U-L. That is spelled, or that is pronounced, soul. Your soul. Your soul is the key to kingdom prosperity. Your what? I can't hear you. Your what? Your soul. Listen very carefully, guys. Your soul is the main player for kingdom wealth and kingdom prosperity. Your soul. Your soul is a combination of your emotions, your thinking, your will. And I'll show you in the Bible. It's your soul. Your soul is the key. So what we are trying to address in this, in this four weeks of this series, Show Me the Money, is your soul. If we can get your soul on the right path, it will be impossible for any country to hold you down. It doesn't matter the country you live in. If you live in Nigeria, you can prosper here. You know, all of us don't have to relocate. It's not easy out there. Ask people that are out there now. Most of them go and start from the base again. It's not that easy. Yes, they have the basics of life, for sure, but that they're, mostly they're not prosperous. Because your soul is the same soul you are taking there. It's better for you to treat your soul. If you are here, even in Nigeria, in Africa, if your soul is right, you can be a multi-billionaire in dollars. Your soul. Your soul. It's a combination of your mindset, your emotional state, your will. Let's see. Third John 2, guys. Third John 2. He said, Beloved. <laughs> I like that. He said, Beloved, you are my guy. He said, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. So keep top of that word. We hear that word throughout this month. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as. That phrase even as means equally as. That means to the degree at which your soul prospers is how your life prospers. So listen, gentlemen. Listen, gentlemen. Whatever you are in those five things I mentioned, wherever you are, is a reflection of where your soul is. And I want to beg you this morning, please don't argue. Don't argue with anybody. Don't say, yeah, I'm be more than this now is the economy. I don't matter now is the president. I don't matter now is the, is the, is the, is the, is the dollar. Mm -mm, mm -mm, shut up. Stop that. Stop that. Where you are now is a direct reflection of how your soul is. It has nothing to do with the ground where you are. The Bible said there is much food in the tillage of the poor. DJ, can you find that scripture for me? It said there's much food that means there's abundance in the tillage of the poor, even though we'll enter this more next week. So that means the poor person is not poor because the ground is poor. Look at this. Say, much food is in the tillage of the poor, but he is destroyed because of where his soul is. Want of judgment is a function of the soul. How he's thinking, how he's seeing life. So you must first agree. I've listed five levels. Are you poor? No, don't worry. Don't argue. You're not going to stay there. Are you broke continuously? Don't worry. You're not going to stay there. Are you average or comfortable? No problem. Are you rich? No problem. Or are you wealthy? Anyone you are is a direct link to your soul. That's why somebody said, I have always, I've, I've been broke, but I've never been poor. That means even the time he didn't have, he didn't see it as if he was poor. When you are poor, you have a behavior. You beg. You, you look at yourself inferior to other people. You feel somebody's better than you because they're driving a car. No. Some people driving cars are not wiser than you. So you, 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 don't, don't, don't reduce yourself in your own eyes. It's about your soul. Don't think you don't have. You might be temporarily broke. Don't treat yourself like you're poor. Don't talk poor. Don't think poor. How do you know you're poor? Whenever they, they want to have a discussion that will involve money, you are running. You've already agreed and assumed and ascribed to yourself that you can never have. When you are broke and not poor, even when you don't have, you attend big meetings. They say, we're going to raise 10, 10 million. I say, beautiful. I'm going to look into it. I'll look into it and see what we can raise. You don't, you, you, you don't give up on yourself. 
You don't give up. When people are talking about doing things for people or giving to the poor, don't come and line up as the poor. Line up as the person giving to the poor. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. Your soul. Say, even as your soul prospers. Even as what? Your soul prospers. How do I, how do I build my soul? How do I develop my mindset? Very simple. I'm trying to rush into these 10 minutes I have. Because there's so much that I, have, I don't have time to cover in this service. So don't miss this series. Quickly. How do I build my soul? We saw that being poor is, 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 is a mindset. Joseph was a slave, but the Bible said he was prosperous. How can a slave be prosperous? Because he was free in his mind. Because he didn't come from a poor background. They sold him as a slave, so he was not a true slave. When he got there, he rose above the other slaves. Those ones were really slaves. He was never really a slave. Listen, don't let Nigeria tell you you are poor. Don't let Dollar tell you you are poor. Don't let the employment tell you you are poor. You are not poor. If you're a child of God, you are a child of a rich man. You're a child of a wealthy man. You're a child of God. You are not poor. Don't let anybody tell I don't care where you live. I don't care if you came here without shoes. You are not poor. Don't ever agree you are poor. Joseph was a slave. But he was not a true slave. The other ones were slaves. So when he got there, he rose above them. Even when he got to prison, the other ones were real prisoners. He was not a prisoner in his mind. He was still a prime minister in his mind. The Bible said in prison, he noticed that other people were downcast. Who is not downcast in prison? <laughs> it's only Joseph and Apostle Paul. And you know two of them were free in their mind. Joseph was helping people in prison. So it was impossible for him to stay down. Don't let Nigeria tell you you are poor. Don't let your landlord tell you you are poor. Don't let your boss tell you you are poor. Don't let dollar rate tell you you are poor. Don't let the economy tell you you are poor. Don't let price of fuel tell you you are poor. Don't let price of light tell you you are poor. Don't let price of food tell you you are poor. Don't let this government tell you you are poor. You are not poor. Come on, say I'm not poor. If I say I can never be poor. No, say to bonus, I can never be poor. Very important how you're thinking, how you're talking. Affects your soul. You say, let's run for mama. Let's run for our father. Let's run for our village. You just, you just go and dodge. You say, how can we? Who is raising money again? If you money, don't talk like that. Some people do it in church. Say, no, let's buy an AC. Say, hey, hey, where, where, where? You're already grumbling. You're already, who told you you're the one they're looking for? You're already grumbling. You're already afraid. You must be free in your mind. You must be free in your mind. That freedom in your mind, mentally, is what brings the physical one. I was talking to my friend today. He said there's no wife in Nigeria. I said, you must change that mindset first. You must change that. When you change that mindset, then you will start seeing the right wife or wife materials. But once you think there's no money in Nigeria, you will never see the opportunity. That's how life was created. We change from inside out, not outside in. The moment you say there's no money in Nigeria, then money will be dodging you. You won't see them. When you say, I will prosper here, I will prosper in the land, I will make it, I will be rich, then the opportunities will start to come. That's the law of life, guys. That's why I need your soul to be right. Money won't come first before you start thinking rich. No, you think rich, then money comes. It's the other way around, guys. Somebody catching this thing. Oh, man. So quickly, let me read three scriptures. Then we'll close for this one. We'll continue next week, no problem. But you will get it all. And nothing will stop you in the name of Jesus. Psalm 1. Psalm 1, quickly, quickly, DJ. Give me Psalm 1 from verse 1. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh in the castle of godly, standing in the way of the sinners, not seated in the state of scornful, next verse. But his delight shall be in what? In the law of the Lord. His delight will be in the law of the Lord. Please take note of delight. He's not reading the Bible like a punishment. He's not reading the Bible like an assignment. He said he, he himself loves to read the Bible. His delight is in the law. Some of your delight is in blogs. Your delight is in Instagram. Your delight is in Twitter, or on Twitter, or X, or whatever they call it. Your delight, it shouldn't be on, on the economic news. Your delight should be in the, law, in the law of the Lord. And inside that law, do it. He meditates. Meditates. Say with me, meditate. No, shout it louder. Say, meditate. He said, his law. He, he meditate day and night. When you see anywhere the Bible says day and night, what they mean is throughout the day, okay? Because the day is divided into two, day and night, okay? So when you see day and night, what they're saying is that this guy thinks on the word of God every hour of the day. He's thinking on the word. 
He's thinking on the word. So when they're saying there's no money, he said, the Lord shall supply all my needs. He's thinking on the Lord. When they say, ah, I never get what I want. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He, he think, when they say, ah, there's no money in Nigeria. He said, he makes me to lie down on green pastures. He's thinking on the word. Day and night. See the next verse, third verse. And he shall be like a tree. You see, the moment his mind is worked on, his life changes. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. This is exactly the same thing they said about Joseph in Genesis. When they, after they said he was prosperous, they said his master put everything in his hand because whatever he doeth prospered. Same thing they said. Look at this here. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And his house, I want to be they said, and whatever he did, he said, go down a few verses. Say, whatever he did, say, prospered. Same thing. Hallelujah. All right? Yes. He said, and, he, and, and his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did toward prosper in his hand. Can somebody lift their hand? Lift your hand. Lift your hand wherever you are. I prophesy over that hand that is raised. Whatever you put it to do will prosper in the name of Jesus. No, you didn't hear me. Raise that hand. I say whatever that hand touches, whatever hand that, that hand finds to do, it will prosper in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's what the word says. But look how it says. He said he meditates on the word. Meditate on the word and day and night, and whatever he chooses to do will prosper. Joshua 1 8, Joshua 1 8, let's be fast, I'm about to close. Joshua 1 8, Joshua 1 8, say, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Very important, your mouth. Your mouth. Stop saying there's no money in Nigeria. Stop saying this country is finished. Stop saying that. Stop saying that. As long as you are still here or you still have relatives here, stop saying this country is finished. It's not finished. He said, the book of law shall not depart of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein. How often? Did you see it again? How often again? This is meditate now. Day and night. Same thing. That thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. That shall have good. Last one. Last one, then we'll close. Um, 1 Timothy 4. 1 Timothy 4. I think 15. Thank you. He says, meditate upon these things. Give thyself what? Holy to them. Guys, this is where the issue lies. People are not giving themselves holy to it. They want to go and hustle in town. Leave the hustling outside. Give yourself holy to the things inside. If you change the inside, you won't hustle outside. He said, meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly, completely to them. He said, that thy profiting will show everywhere. <laughs> when you prosper by the word of God, after a while it starts to show. It's difficult to hide it again. It shows. It shows. It shows. Hallelujah. It shows. See your, now give me the Berean version. Berean version, I like it. It said, be diligent in these matters and absorbed in them. Say, be absorbed. Be, be totally absorbed in it. Be soaked in it. Be absorbed. If the word of God, have, if, you have not, if you are not yet absorbed in God's word, then you are not ready. Then you are not ready. So what does this mean, guys? It means think on these things. Throughout this, uh, maybe from, Sunday, from Monday, we'll get, I'll get the t leadership team to send prosperity scriptures to all the groups. If you're not yet in any group, please make sure you join one on all the groups so that you can have scriptures to meditate on every day of the remaining parts of this month. And that's what's spinning me with the culture of Christians we are raising today. We are raising mindless Christians that don't read the Bible. Just shout and pray. No, 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 no. You see, there's a difference between a financial miracle and financial prosperity. There's a difference. I would, we'll do that next Sunday. We'll show you the difference between Elijah model and Elisha model. One of them was pushing financial miracle. The other was pushing financial prosperity. Two different things. Two different things. We'll do that next Sunday. So don't be mindless. Don't be that Christian and just shout. Just say, God, go and do it. No, 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 no. You must meditate 
And this doesn't only apply with money. Even marriage, even anything, health. You must, you must, and, and that's why, guys, that's why you must read the Bible and read good books and meditate. My challenge with this generation is that you guys are so YouTube and audio message kind of podcast kind of thing. The challenge with those things, and it's good. I, I'm, I'm big on YouTube, as most many of you know. <laughs> I have over 500,000 subscribers on YouTube, so I'm big on YouTube. But the point is this. When it comes to certain matters, anything audio or YouTube that is flowing, the only way you can gain from it is if you regularly pause and think. That's what meditate means. Meditate means stop and think. When you see Selah in the Bible, it means pause. You can't rush. Pause and think. But when you are listening to audio or podcast or YouTube video, they, are, they don't stop. So most of the time your mind is just catching the surface of it. For these things to enter, you must pause. It's like when, I read, when, I, when I'm reading a book and I see where God says he took care of the lilies. He took care of the birds. They don't farm, but he takes care of them. Will he know why won't he take care of you? I stop and I begin to think that truly, oh, these birds, who is feeding them? You see, when you start to meditate, the thing now enters. It doesn't enter. When, there's no way you see what the Bible says. If you read the Bible, you prosper. No, we don't prosper by reading the Bible. We prosper by meditating on the Bible. That's what we read. You know, reading, reading doesn't benefit you. It's when you meditate. Meditate enough for it to change how you think and how you talk. But you see, that depth can't come in, this, in, in, in just rushing through something, in just, in just breezing through something, in just listening to one thing and it, it's, they're, they're always talking. Except you're pausing it to think. When I read books, I can read a book for a year, a whole year. Because once I see one line and the line hits me, ah, I will stop and think and think and think and think and think how that thing applies to me. It will change how I'm thinking. Too. By the time I'm done with that book, it might have taken me one year old, But when I'm done with that title, it will be hard for me to suffer anything again along that line. It will be hard. Since I read the book by Kenneth E. Hagen, titled the, the Triumphant Church. Ah! Me and Satan, we settled our battle forever. No fight since that time. We can't have issues since that time. I understood my authority. For sure. There are books I read on financial prosperity from the kingdom perspective first. Don't start from the streets. Start from God. So that as you're going to the streets, you have a backing. I can never be poor. I can never, never, no matter the country I land, I, money, I'm a money magnet. I prosper in every currency. The, the, see, the thing I'm banking on is not the economy of the country. It's not my connections. What I'm banking on is a spiritual force. The same thing Abraham knew in Genesis 14. When, when, when they came from the battle and took the spoils of war, and the king said, let me cut you something. Let me share you something from this battle. And the, Abraham told him, in a battle Abraham fought. Abraham told that king, I have sworn that I won't take even a shoe latchet, shoelace from the spoils of this war. He said, lest you say you have made Abraham rich. He said, he say, he was saying the guy, I have a source of prosperity beyond this deal. Beyond this particular deal. The thing guaranteeing my prosperity is a covenant. When I say I can never be poor, I know what I'm saying. It's not because of Naira and Dollar. Anything like they should do. Abraham said, lest you say. So if you're here and you work, your boss is not your source. Your salary is not your source. Your business is not your source. God is your source. In the training me and Pastor Mitchell are putting together for families, one of the things we are going to tell, teach the families, husband and wife, your husband is not the provider of this home. What an insult. You provide that my foot. When he loses his job now, you will see him humble down. He's not the provider. The wife is not the provider. God is the provider. Two of you are participants and vessels and channels. When you make yourself provider, you say that can easily snuff you off. One bad decision, they sack you, you lose your job, one bad deal, the whole family is broke. I'm not the provider in my home. Never have been, never will be. How can I be? I'm a beneficiary of the provider. <laughs> it's Jehovah Jireh. How do you say you are provider? Provider my foot. How much do you have? <laughs> so I say we're going to teach families. Every family can be rich. There are simple things you must realign. Not a wife grumbling. He didn't give money for her strength. He didn't bring money. My husband can't pay for You are disturbing the man. He's not your provider. He's not your source. My wife told me at the beginning, when we when when someone started dating, and I, she finally agreed to, mar to marry me, we are dating. I said, this one, you want to marry me. You know, I don't have money. I don't have anything. You are sure you can marry me? He said, it was, I'm not looking at your money. That's what she told me. That you are not my source. You are not my source. 
Hallelujah. I was very happy. No pressure. We are just both following God. Hallelujah. And she's a small girl doing well. She brings some change sometimes that help us. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> we, are, we are not the provider. Even teach your children. I'm not your source. God is your source. God can bypass me and bring you a blessing. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Were you blessed at all? Were you blessed this morning? Come on, rise to your feet, someone. Rise to your feet, someone. I'm excited. Poverty will not smell you again. Can't come near you or anybody related to you. This is the end of poverty in your lineage, in your generations. It, they won't mention it. You will take the thing so far that no, it won't be seen or heard around you anymore. Lift your hand and begin to decree and declare that I can never be poor. I am blessed in every currency. I am blessed. God is my source. God is my source. If he takes care of the lilies, takes care of the birds, he will take care of me. I am blessed and highly favored. I profit in every currency. I profit. Come on, go ahead and pray. Moko zatabaya. Eh, shatabaladaya. Oh, makadaradabashita. E kamborodobo satalagada. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Everybody lift up your hand wherever you are. Lift your hand, lift your hand, lift your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree today, nobody that is a member of this assembly or that is even watching online is permitted to be poor. I put an, a, an embargo by the authority of God that poverty can never come near you or your lineage. In the name of Jesus, I break any link you have with poverty. From today, you begin to prosper like never before. You will not only be comfortable, you will become rich. You will not only be rich, you will become wealthy. In the name of Jesus, I decree to so. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Even from this week, you will start to see abundance come your way. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says a word in season is good. Can we celebrate Jesus for sending us that word? It's a word in season. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. I want to pray for somebody here. In case you are here this morning, you are not born again. This word is not for you. If you are not saved, you don't have a relationship with the world, you don't have a relationship with Jesus, this word is, you can be excited all you want, but it's not for you. If you are here this morning, you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I want to pray with you. Wherever you are, just raise your hand. But you, but you, but you like to be born again today. You like to have that relationship. You want to make a decision for Jesus today. Let me see your hand up. Can you raise your hand up? Raise that hand up. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. You can join them. God bless you. You can join that person. Raise your hand. Let me see. Raise this high. This is the high life. It's the life we're enjoying. Do we have more people? Do we have more people? You want to make a decision for Christ today. That Jesus, I want to come to you. Oh, Jesus, I come to you. To receive all that you have available for me. Father, we thank you. Oh, if your hand is up, just put, put that hand on your, on your chest. And repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner I need your forgiveness I believe you died for me and you rose again today I confess you as my Lord and my Savior help me to live for you all the rest of my life in Jesus name Amen Hallelujah please follow follow the ushers church can we celebrate Jesus Hallelujah Amen let's quickly package our offerings package your tithes quickly do that quickly quickly Package your tithe and offering and other seats you have. If you have made pledges, redeem your pledges. All checks are payable to Davis Christian Center. And please write your phone number behind the check. POS machines are available behind. Hallelujah. So you can use your, use your cards to pay. Or you can do a direct bank transfer to the church account number on the screen. Or log on to our website and give. All right. Are we ready? Can you just speak a word of blessing over your, over your tithe? Speak a word of blessing over your seed. Thank you, Father, for the privilege of giving. As we give, we receive. We receive. We can never be poor. We can never be broke. Father, we thank you. Lord, we receive a mighty harvest in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Please cast your seats as you listen to the announcement. Please join us next week, Sunday, by 7.30 a.m. and 9 a.m. as we continue the series. Show me the money. Please spread the word. Invite family and friends. Hallelujah. All right. Also, we'll be posting scriptures on prosperity daily in our WhatsApp group. So take out time to meditate, okay, when you receive um, receive the pictures. All right. If you're not in any WhatsApp group, please see any of the pastors or ministers to get yourself into a group. All right. Very important. This is a very important part of this of this whole great move. All right. Hearing the word and you know meditating upon it. All right. Please join us this Wednesday as we continue the series boosters. All right. By 6:30 p.m. right here. We'll be focusing on career booster this 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 month, eh? Career boosters, and we'll have a see we'll have seasoned career professionals available to provide tips on how to boost your career. Okay, we we'll encourage you to come and invite someone. Okay, today is day 19 of our 90 days with Jesus devotional. We we'll encourage you to kickstart each day with this devotional by going to our YouTube page. Have you guys been enjoying it? All right. Mark your calendars and join the Transform Nation as we begin the series, the, the Coinfluence, all right? Whether you are just starting your financial journey or seeking to enhance your existing knowledge, okay? So don't miss out on this opportunity to gain insight on kingdom prosperity, all right? Um, the dates are 7th and 14th of April right here. Please don't miss it. Prayer School um, starts a four-Saturday course, four-Saturday course on prayer. If you want to know more about prayer, you want to revive your prayer life, you want to just know how to pray. I want to join a group of people who are praying, all right? The prayer school is for you, all right? Um, um, it starts on Saturday, 13th, 13th of April by 7 a.m. right here. So click on the link to join. There's a prayer stand out outside. So if you want to register, okay, there's a stand, very, very visible stand out there. Just go there and register. Prayer will revive your life. Hallelujah. Please scan the QR code projected or visit our website for more details on all events in April. Hallelujah. Can we rise up this morning? Today is Thanksgiving service. Hallelujah. Are you happy to give God thanks? We're not doing this mindlessly or religiously. Amen. It's Thanksgiving Sunday and we're giving thanks greatly. Hallelujah. Has God been good to you? You don't sound like it. Has God been good to you? All right, so we'll take two categories. Okay. Um, choir, are you ready for me, choir? All right. Okay. So if last month was your birthday, you know, God did something special for you. You are promoted. You got a new job. You got married. Whatever it is, you know, that God did for you. And you are very happy. You want to give God thanks. You are going to dance out with joy in your heart, spring in your steps, with a song in your mouth, and come out and give God thanks. You've done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Let me hear you say. Hey, if I have ten thousand songs, it still won't be enough. Let me hear. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow, so many people. God is in the building. Amen. If you want to share your testimony? You want to share? I will take only four people. Okay. I know that last month was your birthday. I'm, I'm happy for you. All right. Well, I like something else. Thank you. Okay, let's give it to her. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for a successful surgery for my dad. Hallelujah. Successful surgery. Amen. Amen. Okay, there's one person there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Two weeks ago, I had a success with surgery. I want to give God praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Lord. Okay, let me come up. Let me come this way. Are we all the men? Only women I want to testify. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for a successful delivery for my brother's baby. He was through here, so we thank God everyone. Hallelujah. Successful delivery. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'll just take one more, one last one. Okay, give it to her. I want to thank God for my mom for healing her. Hallelujah. She was not able to work for a year. And thank wow. God that, you know, they told her that she was going to do surgery. And I told her that surgery. And we prayed. We stand on the word that I needed. And she walked to my sister's wedding day. Hallelujah. She walked on her own. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Can we celebrate God for this for these testimonies? Is healing Abby? Is healing Abby? So if you are trusting God for healing. Now, when we share testimonies like this, it's not drama. It's for other people to say, I, 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 God can do that one. God can do for me too. I receive it. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for these testimonies. We declare that as they've come out to give you thanks, their testimonies are whole in the name of Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. And those that need healing here in this assembly, by directly or indirectly, we declare that it is so. It will come to them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, please cast your seats as you listen. Sorry, as we take the general thanksgiving. So we'll take the general thanksgiving now. All right, please. That you can dance back. Quickly go back. Quickly go back. Don't dance. No dance. Let me announce first. All right, so we'll take general thanksgiving as we are filing out of the hall. Okay? Quiet, quiet, quiet. Come up, come up. We don't have time. Come up. All right, so we'll take general thanksgiving as we are filing out of the hall. All right, you'll be singing and the stewards will be at the door. So you can drop your thanksgiving, thanksgiving seed. Hallelujah. We yeah, are sing some more, sing some more. They are going. Say. <laughs> Going out to, I thought you should go out now. Is that what I announced? Pastor, is that what I announced? I see when the Nigeria are in your blood is too hot. We'll flow, close the service first. The intent giving you offering as you are going out. This is how you pass exam. Oh. I will not talk another thing. Amen. Please, can you close that door? Let us end the service. I want to welcome our first timers. Hallelujah. You people don't come to church, you don't know how we do service. Amen. We have first service. Sit down. Just sit down. Sit, sit, sit. This standing is saying, sit down. If today is your first time here, your very first time here, worshiping here with everybody, sit down. Sit, sit, sit. Uh, ushers, close that door. Let's end the service. I was just wondering, I thought these people that are. Amen. All right, today is your first time here. We need to work on our first timers now. You have not told me that we've not yet welcome first timers. First time, we love you. Thank you for coming. Can you raise your hand wherever you are? Your very first time here. Hey, hey, you see, see first timers. Don't mind them. We love you. You are welcome. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. Can you just, can you just, can you just rise? Let's see you properly. Don't worry. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Where are they? Where are they? Yes, they are up there. How? Yeah, you are welcome. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Wow, these are our special people. I'm sure you were blessed today. You enjoyed the word, Abby. This is how we get blessed every Sunday. Here we have a covenant of victory. We always win here. We face challenges, but we all, church, Abby, we always win. When you join, that will be your testimonies too in Jesus' name. We have a gift for you, a small gift and a reception. So just follow the ushers, please follow them. They want to welcome you properly. Church, can we celebrate them as they, as they go out? Now you can stand up, church. Now you can stand up. Look at somebody, tell that person, I prosper. I, prosper. I can never be poor.
I have a covenant of prosperity and wealth. As David never lost a battle, so will God's work with me be. Amen. All right, please use all the exits. Please open all the exits. Dance out. Dance out and drop your tenth giving seat. We say thank you for fighting our battles for us. Jehovah Olubeja. For not leaving me to the wishes of my enemies. Against him. 